wanted to tell the story of a man who considered himself to be quite ordinary. Frank Borum was a pastor, a minister. He officially pastored three churches, Mosgill, New Zealand, Hobart, Tasmania, and Armidale in Melbourne, Australia. But in reality, he wasn't ordinary. He was quite extraordinary. And what he did and what he achieved was also quite extraordinary. And his, his books were, went into the thousands and millions. Epworth Bookshop, the Epworth Publishers, said that he was the greatest catch since John Wesley. I initially wrote an article about FWB for FindingTruthMatters.org. One of his family members saw it, contacted me, and I met up with him. As I drove to uh, Bundaberg in northern Queensland and met Phil Lincoln, the grandson of F.W. Borum, we shared some things and it became something of a burden that I had to take this man's life and put it, put it to video. As I began to do that, the, the whole thing just began to grow because I realised there was so much more to the story of F.W. Borum than had ever been told or even written about. But the more I became interested in his writings, the more interested I became in him. I found that Banner of Truth Trust listed him as one of the 20 greatest preachers of all time, and that Warren Wearsby included him in the list of the 50 greatest Christians of all time. I've since traveled to each of Dr. Borum's churches and uncovered previously unseen photos and materials which have formed a picture of Dr. F.W. Borum largely unknown to the public. It's now time for the world to be reintroduced to one of the greatest writers, preachers and Christians who have ever lived. I discovered afterwards, long afterwards, that my advent synchronised exactly with the dramatic termination of the Franco-Prussian War. On Friday, March the 3rd, 1871, an hour before my arrival, the Prussian troops that had held Paris in a cruel stranglehold commenced the evacuation of the capital. She was only a girl, and I was her first baby, the first of ten. She and I were thus navigating strange seas and exploring new worlds together. Well, not having a budget, not having a film crew, not having a, a whole host of resources to draw on, Everything I've had to do, I've had to be creative in how I went about it. I was able to get six voice actors to play the various parts in telling the story of FWB. I was very fortunate to have a 93-year-old voice actor by the name of Rex McLean, whose voice bears an uncanny resemblance to FW Borum. At first, when members of his family heard Rex, they remarked that just how close it was to his voice. We've also had other voice actors play the part of his mother and, and others have been involved as well. I was fortunate to have the Reverend Peter Thornycroft, a good Welsh voice, be the narrator for the whole project as well. And together these people helped me over the last few years to be able to tell this story. In the 1800s, Tunbridge Wells was often frequented by gypsies. F.W. Borum's biographer, Howard Crago, tells us that one sunny July afternoon in 1871, a nurse girl sat by the roadside a mile or so out of Tunbridge Wells along the Southborough Road, allowing the four-month-old baby in her lap to enjoy the sunshine. Hearing the crunch of wheels along the road, the girl looked up from her petticoated bundle to see a gypsy caravan just coming around the bend. A mysterious gypsy woman came up to the pram in which Frank was placed. She reached out, took his hand, and looking up at the nurse, she said, tell his mother, place a pen in his hand, and he'll never want for a living. No one could have dreamt of how prophetic those words were. After producing the four video projects that covered the life and ministry of F.W. Borum, I still wasn't quite satisfied. I wanted to produce an overall video project, an overall Blu-ray or DVD that would introduce someone perhaps who'd never heard of F.W. Borum, never read anything of F.W. Borum, and introduce them to him, what was really at the core of his soul. And 
as I've looked at his life, I've realized that he really focused on being a pastor. He cared deeply about those people who had already committed their life to Christ and he cared about those who hadn't. And that is the role of a pastor. And as he set about to do this, I was wondering how could I capture this in one video. So really, what I've done in FW Boring Part 5, his pastoral pilgrimage, is in a way I hope whet your appetite to want to look more. And that's why I've got the four background DVDs, the four background video projects that will cover his life in England. You'll see how his life was powerfully shaped by the adversity that he went through in his teen years that left him with a permanent disability. How he began to find himself in New Zealand and how he did discover his voice in Hobart and how he launched himself onto the international stage when in Melbourne. Added to this are some of the other things that he did which largely up until fairly recently were unknown. His his interplay with politicians, including premiers and prime ministers, and how he was able to be a pastor to them. So his role in the arts, his role in media, his role in sport, his role within the church, all was simply him fulfilling the role of a pastor. So in particular, I want to introduce a whole new generation of readers to the work and the life of F.W. Boreham, but Really, it's pastors. I hope that there are pastors who will watch this. Pastors who perhaps are right now discouraged, either with themselves or with their role that they are trying to fulfill. Because it's my hope that as you watch this, fellow pastors, you'll be encouraged that you'll see an ordinary man who is able to do the ordinary in an extraordinary way. It certainly encouraged me it's inspired me. I think if you are to ask anyone in our church, they would say that they are the beneficiaries of my interest in F.W. Boreham. We've seen our church grow. We've seen people develop in their love and relationship with Christ because of F.W. Boreham's influence on my pastoral ministry. And so it's with that hope that I commit to you part five of Navigating Strange Seas the pilgrimage, the pastoral pilgrimage of F.W. Boreham. The boy who wrote this garden was in deadly earnest. It called, oh dear friends, repent. Oh dear friends, believe. Oh dear friends, come to Jesus. Oh dear friends, look to the cross. Oh dear friends, accept the Saviour. Oh, dear friends, flee from the wall to come. With the years, I have outgrown the technique of the old oh, dear friends. But I thank God today that I have never outgrown the technique of repent. Believe. Look to the cross. Accept the Savior. Flee from the law of the God. As you people well know who have attended this poor ministry of mine these 18 years in Scots Church, those words have been the keynote of all that I have said. And I have failed just to the extent to which I have failed to persuade you to repent to believe, and to look to the Savior, and to flee from the wrath to come.